Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com and today we're going to take a look at retouching eyes like a pro. This is not going to be your standard tutorial converting eyes to look like space crystals or anything crazy like that. We're going to take a, a much more realistic approach and the approach in fact that I take with my own photographs. So we're going to talk about the retouching process in Photoshop but also a couple things to look for before you even get to Photoshop because some photos there's only so much you can do if the data isn't there or if the eyes have haven't been lit up quite the way they maybe should be um, and darker eyes are always a little bit more difficult than lighter eyes so we're using a model here with darker eyes in this particular example but retouching portraits in photography my go-to starting point is the eyes I jump right to it it's sort of that focal point it's the sparkle in the image it's, it's what gives that feeling of life to your images uh, so it's very very important um, and using this technique that I'm going to show you again it's a technique that I use it's all non-destructive it's super easy to go in and do it doesn't take much time at all and you're gonna love it and it's going to sort of add this extra dimension of professionalism uh, whatever that means to your images it's just gonna make them look better it's gonna make them jump off the page a little bit more so with all of that in mind let's jump in and take a look at retouching eyes in Photoshop so I'm here in the bridge and I've got a DNG file this is a camera raw file I've just converted to Adobe's digital negative format I'm gonna double click to open that up in Photoshop and you can see it's gonna give me the camera raw editor I'm gonna knock it out of full screen there alright and here we go now I've already made a few changes with regard to the color temperature and some things like that uh, change the light the the number one thing that I'm concerned with here are the eyes obviously but really in general I am concerned with the eyes and what I'm looking for is I want light in the eyes I want to be able to see some detail here in the colored part of her eye that is going to give us something to work with so when you're looking at photographs that you've taken you really want to expose them so you can get some detail in the eyes we want to see some color we don't want these to be shadowy black discs you know of a soulless character that's staring at us not only is that very creepy but it also makes for a not so great photograph so that's the number one thing number two if at all possible you want some kind of a catch light now here I was in studio with this subject so I was able to control the catch light in her eyes sometimes you're thinking well I'm not always carrying studio lights around with me what do I do well there are plenty of other things that create catch lights for instance if you're out in a field natural light you're gonna get this big you know stunning catch light across the top of the eye from the sky uh, sometimes when you're indoor if there's a large window or door or other light source like that that will provide you with a catch light and it's just going to give depth to the eye it's not always a, an absolute requirement to have a catch light but boy it sure helps if you've got one so just something to keep in mind get light in the bottom of the eyes and whenever possible wherever possible get at least one catch light so with all of that in mind I'm going to open up this image I'm actually going to size it down here and I'm going to go ahead and open this as a smart object you can open it as an image or a smart object Either way, it should work. So now that we've done this, I'm going to zoom in on the eyes and we'll begin taking a look at our image. Again, like I said, you want to just keep an eye out for the light in the eyes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is begin removing blemishes on the eye itself. So we can see there's some veins um, on the whites of her eyes, which, you know, again, sometimes I'm getting rid of them. Sometimes it's not really a big deal. In this case, just for the sake of this tutorial, we'll get rid of them. So here's what I would do. I would go layer, new layer, and you can just name this you know blemishes and hit OK there's our new layer great grab the clone stamp tool and you can use a variety of different tools the clone stamp tool works sometimes I'll go with the healing brush uh, for the most part though I found lately I've been going with the clone stamp tool and just reducing the opacity to something I don't know let's go with like four, uh, 30 percent that should be uh, good uh, and uh, we're gonna downsize our brush size here maybe something like five or six pixels will probably work and very soft edges we want very soft edges alright now that we've done that you can see I just tried to click and Photoshop says hey you need to define an area alt click so it'll be alt or option click um, to define a sample point so I'm gonna alt click right here and I'm gonna begin by just painting along that vein and you can see because we're at 30 percent it's gonna be a very subtle change so we're not making any kind of really crazy uh, changes here to our colors now here the vein runs right to the edge so I'm actually gonna sample the edge and I'm just gonna line it up and paint away from the edge just like so alright there we go we've made that much more subtle much more subtle and probably one more and it's pretty well gone great again all just subtle little changes I'm gonna kinda of fly through it here and you can be as particular as you like 
All right, that eye looks pretty good. We'll just clean that spot up there. And you can always shut the blemish layer off. There's before, there's after. So we just clean that eye right up. Then we'll fly over to here. And again, I'm gonna sample starting with the edge so I can really get a good sample off the edge. And I'm really just doing that mainly force of habit. I'm used to using the healing brush where it would really be uh, making things a little funky uh, with the edge if we got too close to it. But still something that works for kind of keeping everything in line and making it all look right. We go paint over some of this. Oh, that's a little bit too dark. I want to make the brush kind of large, and I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit more. Maybe bring it down to about 15, and I'm just going to paint one light spot over the darker portion of the eye, mainly just to help blend it all together. So there's before, there's after. All right, and if we zoom out, we can take a look, and it looks okay. Uh, really, ideally, I want to add some more shadow in this side of her eye, but we're not going to take the time to do that right now. Typically, though, you would spend just you know another 30, 40, 50 seconds or a minute and do that. So now that we've corrected sort of blemishes on the eye, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and add some light into the eye. So we're going to do that by adding a curves adjustment layer. We're going to go layer, new adjustment layer, curves. And you can name this whatever you like. Um, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll name this light and I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to set this to a blend mode of either screen or color dodge. Um, I kind of bounce between the two, so I'm going to go with screen for now. And you can see what this is doing is it's just lighting up the entire image, right? So we don't want to do that. We, we just want to light up the eyes. So we're going to invert our mask by selecting the masking and hitting Command or Control I just like that, and we filled our mask with black, great. So I can zoom back in on the eyes, and I'm gonna grab my brush tool, that's the hotkey uh, for that is the letter B, and I'm going to set the size to something fairly small, let's go with about 20 pixels, and set the opacity to 10%, or about 10%, and I'm just gonna begin painting light into the bottom of the eye, just like that. So if I shut that layer off, you can see there's before, there's after. So we're just dropping a spot of light in the bottom of the eye. And then what I'll even do is target light spots on the iris and just accentuate them a little bit. That's going to, again, increase the depth that it looks like she has in her eye. So increase almost the distance between the very outside layer of her eyeball and the actual color in her iris. So now that we've done that, we're going to also run over the catch light to really enhance that and bring up the brightness factor uh, for our catch light. That's great. Well, we don't want to do that. And then the last thing that I usually do is to increase the three-dimensional look of the actual eyeball, I'm going to paint with white right along the outside here. Uh, paint with white, that being revealing some of our screened adjustment layer. So again, we're using our, our brush tool set to an opacity of about 10%. And I'll just brush once or twice just to lighten that up right in there. And then we're going to end up shading in the other part of the eyeball just to increase the kind of, you know, ball shape or spherical shape of the actual eyeball. So there's that one eye before, after. Let's go and hit the other eye. And I'm going to add that light to the bottom of the eye as I did before. Add a little bit of light to some lighter areas of the eye. Increase the catch lights, right? There we go. Cool, cool and just go ahead and increase the white part of the eyes. There's before, there's after. So if we zoom out, we can begin to see our difference. Great, so we've added the light to the eyes. Now we need to add some shadow. So we're gonna do basically the same thing. Layer, new adjustment layer, curves. And we can name this darks or shadows or whatever you like. Invert the mask. Actually, before we invert the mask, go ahead and set this layer to a blend mode of multiply. And again, I jump between multiply and color burn here. We'll go with multiply for the sake of going multiply screen. And I'm going to just select the mask, command or control I to invert it. Great. So now I'm ready to paint in wherever I want there to be shadowy areas or darker areas here on her eyes. So I'm going to grab my brush tool. And again, we're leaving the opacity right around 10%. That's perfect. And I'm going to size my brush down a little bit. Right, so about 15 pixels is what I'm using. And I'm going to begin by darkening the actual pupil of her eye. And as I do this, I don't mind. Remember, I'm using a very soft brush. The hardness is set to 0%. I don't mind if I'm darkening uh, sort of the innermost part of the iris. Again, we're just going to be adding some depth to the eye. So there's before, there's after. We just darkened up the pupils a little bit. Now we're going to size our brush down even smaller. And we're going to trace a nice little line right around the outside of the iris. All right, just like so, great. Do the same thing down here. Trace the outside of the iris. So there's before, there's after. And now after this, we're going to increase the shadow on the outside of the eyeball, right? 
just like that. So we're increasing sort of that cylinder shape of the actual eyeball or making it look like it's a little bit more uh, exaggerated. So there's before, there's after with both of our light layers turned on, turned off. Now the beauty of using these adjustment layers is we can always go in and reduce the opacity. For instance, if I think there's just too much dark, I can just reduce the opacity a little bit and just tone it back a little bit. So bring it up a little bit and then you know use opacity to sort of scroll back and find the sweet spot, so to speak, that looks best for your particular image. So now that we've done this, one of the things that I do like to do also is go in and just throw a vibrance adjustment layer and reduce the vibrance. That's gonna sort of make the whites of the eyes look a little bit more pure. And just when you desaturate the color of the eyes a little bit, it usually looks a little better as well. So I'm gonna add here a vibrance adjustment layer and I'm just gonna go, you know, negative 15, something like that. Again, invert the mask, Command or Control I, and I'm gonna grab my brush tool. And now I'm gonna set the opacity to 100% because I just wanna paint over the eyes and just sort of desaturate them a little bit. It's gonna take out some of that red around the edges of the eyes. It's a very subtle but very good little adjustment to make. So at this point, you could really stop retouching the eyes and, and you could consider this done, but I still like to take it a step further. There's a couple things I like to do. I like to add at least one more set of catch lights to sort of accentuate the catch lights that are already there. And sometimes I'll even go in and add catch lights that aren't there or just use those catch lights to brighten up the bottom of the eyes even more. You know, this is sort of the special effect area, you know, heading into other areas of digital image manipulation, but it's a lot of fun and it's something that's just good to know. So let's just take a look at it here. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm gonna call this catch light upper. If I can spell catch light correctly, there we go, catch light upper. And I'm going to grab my elliptical marquee tool. Now you could use a very hard edged brush, it really doesn't matter what you use here. Point is, I want something that's circular. And I'm going to hold my shift key down and drop a circle that's about the size of my current catch light, you know, right about the size of it, whether or not it's height or width or whatever works best. As long as it's a nice little circle, I'm gonna drop it right in there and fill this with white. Go edit, fill, fill with white. Okay, Command or Control D to deselect. Now I'm gonna grab my Move tool, that's the letter V, and I'm gonna hold down my Alt or Option key and drag that catch light over to the other eye. Now this is important. When you're creating a new catch light, you want your catch lights to be in the same spot on both eyes. Typically that's about how it is. Roughly, the catch light is gonna be in the same spot on both eyes. So you can take the time and really examine and, and make the catch light exactly perfect. But for the most part, you're not gonna to notice too, too much of a difference, but still something to keep in mind. So now that we've done this, we can merge both of these layers. So I'm gonna shift click both and hit Command or Control E, and we have both of our catch lights on one layer. Now that I've done that, I can set this layer to the blend mode of soft light. So you can see that we've really started blending this in. In fact, if I zoom all the way out, it really doesn't look, well, it does look kind of bad actually, um, but that's the first step. I, I don't think I've ever stopped quite there. So what you can do again, because this is on its own layer, is well, we can go ahead and just reduce the opacity some. That's gonna help blend it in. We can reduce the, the fill opacity, actually. I tend to like using the fill opacity. It seems to just blend stuff together a little bit better. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the fill opacity to about 70, 70, 72. Looks like it works pretty well. We can also, at this point, go ahead, and this is another thing that I almost always do to catch lights that I'm adding, is I just blur them a very little bit. So we go blur, Gaussian blur, and what I'm saying a very little bit I mean like one pixel, maybe one and a half pixels. One pixel looks pretty good. It's just gonna remove that really harsh edge from our catch light. And you can see how well these catch lights are now blending in. They're almost just becoming part of the catch light that's already there. I love that. So the other catch light that I'll add is what I call the lower catch light. And this catch light is just gonna go in the bottom of the eye. And there's a few different ways I'll do this. Um, so I, maybe I'll do one of each for, for uh, each eye. But again, part of the value of adding light to the bottom of the iris is you increase the depth of the eye. And if you can increase the depth of the eye, you add to this, uh, people are gonna look at your images and just say that there's life in that image. I can see it's like the person's looking off the screen or looking off the wall and they're looking into the room, kind of like the Mona Lisa uh, when she's, you know, no matter where you stand in the room, she's looking at you. So for the first lower catch light, I'm gonna grab my lasso tool and I'm actually gonna draw a catch light. So I'm just gonna draw a series of pointy, jagged edges here, right? And you, I know what you're thinking, this looks awful, what are you doing? 
but hang with me here. So we've got this crazy selection. Now we're going to fill this with white. Edit, fill, white. Great. Deselect, Command or Control D. So at this point, we can just set this to soft light. If we zoom out, right, it looks awful. Looks like there's a shark teeth in her eyes or something. So what we're going to do is blur this. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I blur this a significant amount. Now, one pixel is pretty significant for the size of our graphic here, but I'll probably go 1.5, maybe even 2. So there we go, 2. So you can see at this point, the jaggedness of our selection, really all it's doing is just adding a little bit of variance to the amount of light that we're dumping into the bottom of the eye. There's before, there's after. And let me try overlay. Overlay is actually not bad. We preserve a little bit more of the color. And then I would really you know, drop the opacity quite a bit. So if I zoom out now, there's before, there's after. So we've thrown some light in the bottom of the eye like that. Now the other way that I do this, I'm just going to create a new layer here. I'm going to say lower catch two. And what I do over here is I just use my brush tool, right? And I set it to have a very hard edge and be very, very small. Um, size down even a little bit smaller than that. And what I do is just draw a series of dots in the, you know, right around the bottom of the eye. So like one, two, three, four, five dots like so. And then I would blur these. So I would go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And two isn't quite enough. Let's try three. Something like three looks pretty good. And then we would go and set this to either overlay or soft light as well. And you can reduce that opacity again. So it's not really a catch light more than it is just adding light to the bottom of the eyes to increase the depth. But you can see what you know both of those bottom catch lights do. Um, they really increase the depth that she has in her eyes. But the only thing that I would caution is be very careful. This doesn't look too realistic. I really need to come in here and play with the opacity even more and level this stuff out. Um, if you're going for a more realistic approach. However, all of these different techniques to sort of build to this eye retouch are all, as you can see, on individual layers. So you're going to be able to go in and adjust opacity and blend modes and mask anything you like and build up these eyes and do this a couple times and no kidding, it takes five or six minutes, boom, you've knocked out retouching some eyes and it's a fairly realistic result in the end. So if we go back there's what her eyes looked like before. There's what they look like now. I'll zoom in to give you a better example here. There's before and there is after. So you can see we're not turning her eyes into space crystals. They still have this beautiful soft light falling over them. The shadows and highlights have been accentuated subtly and we can go even more subtle because I guess really it's not that that subtle right now. But that's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a thing or two. Make sure you go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com. And follow me on Twitter, at Tutvid. I'll catch you guys later. Enjoy.